Okay, guys, welcome to a recap video of yesterday's session. For those of you who are wondering what is happening, yesterday I did a little classroom session with some students who were beginning their journey on their final year project for their degree program. And the uh, final year project requires them to shoot a film, a short film based on a script that one of them wrote. And the uh, class yesterday was to teach them or introduce them to the final workings of how a team works in that environment. Okay, so this video is going to be short, it's going to be sweet, it's going to focus on one particular topic, and that topic is camera usage. Okay, now the cameras that you guys are going to use are DSLRs. Okay, let me pause the video, I'll go get one. All right, I'm back. In my hand is a DSLR that the school has. It's a 750D, it's a Canon. You can use any DSLR you want, but you are bound to learn the techniques of making these DSLRs look alike. Okay, let me explain what that means. Now, in a final year project, usually there are two or three camera people shooting the scene at the same time, okay? All of them can have same cameras, same brand, same model that would be ideal okay but in a situation where you have different brands different cameras different models you will need to make sure that all the footage look the same which is pretty hard all right because one one could be a canon one could be a nikon one could be a panasonic and they will look different actually they won't they look different out of the camera Due to post-processing techniques, you'll be able to make them look alike, okay? And that is the subject of one of the future workshops which I'm going to do with you guys to show you how to grade, how to match clips, how to grade clips, and how to do post-production and mastering, okay? That is the goal. That is the final lesson before you guys graduate and produce your final film. This is the very first lesson on how to get started. And this is especially for Egan and you guys who have not done your photo com or your photo class yet. Okay, so it's an introduction to this camera. Okay, but this video is purely for video production, not photography. Okay, so I'm going to show you things that you need to learn and do to make sure that your videos are good. Okay, so step one, battery, camera. If you're going to shoot videos, you're going to need a lot of batteries. Why? Because video production takes hours, days, weeks, and months. Okay, These batteries for the DSLR last you on, a, on an average of one hour max, which means you're going to need to switch and switch and switch and switch. Okay. Now, the school has uh, spare batteries for you. You can actually get them, but the way you guys work, and I've seen all of you, your batteries won't even last two hours. Okay. So let me teach you the technique. Charge the battery, stick it in, turn the camera on. Okay, by the way, all of these things are cursory. You are going to still need to come and get the camera for me and practice here. Okay, turn the camera on, do what you got to do, and then when you are taking a break or when you're going off to talk to your friend, please turn it off. I have seen people talk to their friend, leave the camera on, and then come back and the battery is gone. So you've got to have some discipline on that regard. Take care of your batteries, all right? Step number two, SD cards. These little guys that come with the camera are 32 gigabytes in size. They will fill up in a matter of hours. One hour, it's done, okay? You need to be able to transfer this to your computer and then format the card and then start again. Okay, if you don't want to do that, you need to get more SD cards and you need to keep the SD cards organized. Okay, now the reason for that is because the video clips that they create, the file names could be similar to your friend's camera. Remember, you are going to do a three camera shoot minimum. My footage, that person's footage, that person's footage, they're all going to be compiled into one folder on your editor's desktop file names are going to be similar. So your job is to make sure which SD card goes where. If not, the editor is going to kill you. <laughs> All right? Okay. Next is how do you hold a video camera? Well, in this scenario, use the strap, 
push the camera out against you. You can hold it like this if you want. You can hold it like that if you want. I like to hold it like this because as I'm moving, and notice I'm moving from the waist. I'm not turning my upper torso, right? From my waist, I am focusing continuously. Remember guys, like I told you earlier, there's nothing that's automatic in video production. Everything needs to be in manual mode. And the one thing that you want manual above all else is the focusing ring, which is the outermost ring, the topmost ring over here. Okay. There's another ring at the bottom here, which as you can see, it makes the lens go in and out. That's your zoom ring. That ring you don't touch while recording. You only zoom it to frame what you want. And when you are ready and you're about to go, press record and then don't touch the zoom ring anymore. Okay, guys? Remember that rule, yeah? No one wants to see a shot where the lens zooms in and out. Now, don't get me wrong. If you look at movies and videos, you will see a camera go in and out to a person's face. That's not a zoom. That is physically, the camera is moving towards the person's face and moving back out. These are called camera moves, and you will learn this later in other, other videos when you come for practice okay right so let's let's keep this going I want to end this really quickly for you guys here are the steps I'm gonna stand here so you um, I'll list down the steps here step one what do we do when you first get a camera first things first you need to set the frame size of the files now you know that your video clips uh, they are stored in either mp4 format or mov format and all that right but if you look at the video if you open up your screen, turn on your camera, okay, press the menu button over here, there's a menu button, and go and look for the menu tab that says format card, which is the one with the spanner, alright, press format and it is now cleaning the card. That's the very first thing you do when you get your camera. Okay, guys? If you don't do that, you are not, your SD card is actually going to slow down because there are other nonsense in there, other people's work, other people's files. It's just going to slow down. So to keep things at its maximum speed, you need to format the card and get ready for work. And there you go. It's back to normal. All right? Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to go to the... Hang on a moment, let me look for it. All right, so if you go if you go to your video mode over here, and if you go to the fifth menu, you will see movie rec size. Okay, guys? I'll show you again. Movie recording size, the one at the top. Press that, and you will have a list of options to choose from, okay? There are only two options that I would recommend. The first one is Full HD 25P. Okay, I'm putting captions there. And the other one is HD 50P. These are the two things that you want. Okay, ignore everything else. All right. Now, the reason for that is simple. The HD and the Full HD files are the largest resolution files that you want. One of them is 25 frames per second. Another one is 50 frames per second. Okay. If your video has a lot of action movement and you want it to be a little bit more crisp, not sharp, huh? crisp, that means motion. Look at my hand. You can see the blurring, right? Yeah. If you shoot with 50p, you get less blurring. Okay? So you make a choice on which one that you want and ensure that everybody in the team uses the same setting. Okay? If you have one camera that's 50, one camera that's 25, when you edit the footage, it will look different. And everyone will know. Okay? Including your lecturers, especially me. So, please, step one, make sure that you select the right one and everyone is on the same page. Okay? That's number one. Number two, you want to make sure that everybody is using the same white balance settings. Now, in in terms of white balance, if you don't know what it is, you can look at other videos or I can show you another video. But the white balance settings that I would recommend is either daylight, tungsten, fluorescent, or custom. Okay? 
Now, I would guarantee you that custom is going to be a pain, so don't do custom. Instead, just choose between these three settings, daylight, fluorescent, or tungsten. Okay, One of these will work in whatever environment you are. So let me explain. If you're outdoors, it's obviously daylight. If you're in a room like this, it's obviously fluorescent. Or if you're in a room that has orange lights or warm lighting, obviously that's tungsten. Okay? You will come to a, to a point where there is mixed mode lighting, where it's a little bit of daylight and a little bit of fluorescent, then you need to make a choice which light is dominant. Dominant meaning which light has more effect on your scene. In this room right now, there's daylight coming from the side over here, which is very little, but the majority of the room is fluorescent. So I'm going to set my phone, my hand, uh, camera to fluorescent. Okay, so that's step number one, two, one, two or three. I don't know, it's after the white band, the frame rate. Okay, so frame rate, white balance. Next is shutter speed. Okay, now I could give you a whole talk on, on shutter speeds and all its value, but I want you to follow a simple rule. Set the shutter speed to 1 over 2 times your frame rate. So let me explain. If your frame rate, the video file, yeah, if it's the FPS is 25p, then your shutter should be 1 over 50. I repeat, huh? double your frame rate. If you choose the, the video file that is 50p, then your shutter should be 1 over 100. Okay? Now, all this has got to do about motion blur and shutter angle. Uh, some video, maybe I'll put a link to that video in here somewhere later. But trust me on this, you do not want to change those numbers. Okay? Here's another interesting fact. Lights. You're looking at a, at a light beam right now, but there is actually a flicker. All right? That light isn't constant. It's flickering at 50 times per second. Okay? So your shutter speed should be in multiples of 50 if you want to change it. 1 over 50, 1 over... You, even, you can even go half of 50, 25. 1 over 50, 1 over 75, 1 over 100, 125, 250, etc. Okay? Do not choose an even number. 1 over 80, 1 over 90, 1 over 110. These are numbers that are going to cause a lot of flicker. Okay? Now, there's no right and no wrong here. You choose the shutter speed that you want. Again, make sure that everybody is on the same page. You cannot make a singular decision anymore. You need to work like a team. Okay? Shutter speed is next. Now, after the shutter speed is done, you need to look at your ISO. On this camera, the ISO button is on top. Press the ISO button and please do not use auto. In fact, there is nothing automatic on this camera if you're doing your final year production video. Okay? If there is auto, we will know. Okay? Let me tell you how we will know. Your footage is going to make a change randomly. It's either going to be sharp or blur randomly, it's going to be bright or dark randomly, or the colors are going to change. My skin from a nice wonderful brown color to slightly off brown or green randomly. When we see that, we know you did it on auto, you fail. You don't fail your, your, your course. You fail as a cameraman <laughs> or woman. I'm not being sexist. Understand? Alright, so the next one after your shutter speed is your ISO. And the function of ISO is to compensate for low light. This camera, high tech. Not as high tech as this. Our eye can accommodate. Our eye can change. This guy cannot handle it. So your job is to frame the scene. Let's say I'm shooting in this direction. Change all the settings that I just told you. In order, white balance first, shutter speed second. Last one, uh, second uh, after that is ISO. And in this scenario, I'm going to set my ISO to 1600. And I'm going to check. Ooh, no good. Too dark. I'm going to go again, and I'm going to go to 3002. Focus. Not bad. I like it. All right? Now, don't just stand there and accept that fact. Call your friends, and all of you stand next to each other. Aim the camera in the same direction and say, 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think 3002 is good. Oh, no, mine is not. Why? You need to do that. Okay? Once you determine that that ISO is what you want, stick with it for that scene. Not for the movie, yeah? Only for that scene, that shot. Okay? If I go outdoors and I change location, you have to start from step zero. Do the whole thing again. It's a matter of practice. It's a matter of rehearsal. Okay? All right. Now, after all that is done, there's one more thing that you must do, and that is select your aperture. And the apertures, if I'm, let me show you correctly, they're at the bottom of the screen over here in the middle, the middle number. And my camera can be 5.6. Your camera can be 8. The other person's camera, camera can be 3.5. That is the one value that is different between each camera. Okay, guys? The reason is simple. If you are changing position and changing your framing, the lighting situation is also different. So your job is to make sure that you got a similar look and feel between each cameras. That's the job of the DOP. The DOP will walk around, look at each camera and say, you are too dark, brighter a bit. You are too bright, darker a bit. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? But there are professional ways to do it. And one of the ways to do it is to use this little graph on top here, which I don't think you can see. Can you see it? It's a bit, a bit, uh, hang on, let me block. Yeah. Can you see this little graph thing that's moving over there? That one there? That's called a histogram. I will put a link on how to read the histogram. Someone else did the video. It's fine. Histograms are pretty standard. But that's how we guarantee that the three cameras have a similar look and feel. All right, guys? That is the golden item that we acquired yesterday. How to shoot with three camera people and all that, that one you're going to learn uh, rework later in your workshops, future workshops. But I want you guys now to burn this into your head, this process one, two, three, four, and five. Because every time you change location, you have to do it again and again and again and again. All right, guys, be safe, take care. And the next time I see you, I really don't need to explain this again. You should know what it is. Especially you, Jensen, try to make sense of it. Adios.